Hi everybody, my name is Debbie Ray and I'm the owner of PedigreePups.com and today I'd like to take some time to share some more information with you about one of the other AKC dog breed groups. Today I'd like to talk with you about the toy dog breeds. Now what exactly is the AKC toy dog breed group? Or who are they? What, what is it all about? Now the AKC toy group are breeds that were uh, bred basically to be our companions because basically of their small size and also their robust health. Now the, the main job of these dogs typically is just to make their owner happy. The dogs of this group are best known as our small companions or as our lap dogs. Their miniature size and their playful nature make them wonderful companions. The name toy is a bit misleading however. Many toy dogs are extremely tough so don't let their small size fool you. There's a lot of dog in that small package. The only thing some members of this group have in common is their small size. Toy dog groups, or excuse me, toy group dogs have always been popular with people that live in, you know, cities and apartments, especially because this, the, the members of this dog breed group are very small and, and, you know, easily small enough to be carried around from, from place to place. Overall, though, these dogs do require uh, a lot of exercise, or, or a lot of them do anyway. Uh, they do vary quite a bit in behavior and size and, and type as well. So let's talk a little bit about the different members of the AKC Toy Dog Group as of March 25th, 2008. So the first dog we'll talk about is the Affin Pincher. Now this is one of the most ancient of the toy dog breeds. This dog breed, uh, the name itself means monkey-like terrier. Now these dogs are characterized by that monkey-like expression that they have. This dog breed requires firm but loving guidance because it can be quite obstinate. They're also very well known for possessing a big dog and a small dog mentality, and this can easily get them into trouble from time to time. The Affin Pincher was originally developed to rid the kitchens or granaries or stables of rodents and other unwanted pests. These dogs are alert, fearless, and very inquisitive, and they're also, uh, they have a, a wiry, terrier-like uh, behavior. These dogs are very intelligent. Uh, they're, they're very tenacious and they can also be a very good house pet with the right owner. Now the Brussels Griffon, uh, these dogs tend to be a one, one human dog more, more so than many of the other dog breeds and this might make them not the best fit for every family situation. There are two distinct types of coat in the Brussels Griffon, the rough and the smooth. The rough coat is wiry and dense while the smooth coat is straighter and short. Personality is the first impression that you'll receive when meeting a Brussels Griffon. These dogs have a very distinguishing feature you know, concerning their face. Uh, that beautiful little face it has, has large eyes and a very human-like quality. So the best home for this breed is in a very temperate climate. These dogs do acclimate quite easily to small apartments. However, they do need regular daily exercise and supervision because they like to dig, and they, they will climb, and they like to roam their surroundings. Now the Cavalier Ch King Charles Spaniel, and these dogs need human contact, and they don't always do well in kennels or, or alone because simply because of that, they need human contact. These are indeed lap dogs and can always be happiest when they're in the company of their family. Many owners call these dogs the ultimate lap dog. The true purpose of this dog breed has always been that of a companion dog. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel is the number one toy dog in England and they're considered one of the largest of the toy dog breeds. The Cavalier interacts well with children and they're very active, graceful, and a well-balanced little toy Spaniel. It is this typical temperament combined with their true elegance and royal appearance that make them uh, the ultimate lap dog or the ultimate house pet. Now the Chihuahua come in two different coat types, smooth and long and these dogs are very protective of their owners as well as the rest of their family. These dogs prefer to be with their own kind and as a rule they don't like other dogs or other breeds of dogs and they don't always get along well with children. These dogs are considered toy dogs but they seem to have no concept of their own size and often will fearlessly confront you know other larger animals which can result in injury to them if they're not careful. This is an ancient breed and these dogs are good travelers and can quite easily be carried from you know, one place to the other. These are the smallest breed of dog in, in the world and they're named for the Chihuahua State in Mexico. These dogs are best known for their small size and large direct ears and they can make good, good companions and good family pets with the right owner. 
Now the Chinese crest is kind of an unusual looking dog. Now these are very happy, alert, and loyal dogs, and they're also very affectionate, and they can make wonderful, playful, and very entertaining companions, and they're, they're also great apartment dwellers. Now there are two distinct varieties of this little dog. One is completely hairless except for its feet, head, and its tail. This is called the hairless. And the other has a long coat of soft hair all over its body, and this is called the powder puff. And on the screen you see a picture of the hairless. Now the distinct varieties of these dogs uh, are born in the same litter, so there can be hairless, uh, and there can also be powder puff puppies in the same litter. Now suntan lotion should always be used to protect these hairless hairless crested when they're outside because they can sun sunburn and these dogs do well in apartments and they should always wear a sweater when they're in cold weather and the crested dog breed in general are still very rare but they are becoming some of the more popular of the hairless dog breeds now the English Toy Spaniel is a very bright little dog they're very affectionate and very willing to please their owner and this is also a very loyal breed and they like nothing better than to sit on their owner's lap the English Toy Spaniel is very gentle, they have a very loving temperament, and that makes them an ideal dog for the elderly. This breed, uh, their coat is not known for, you know, is for excessive shedding, but they should be brushed several times a week to maintain a healthy coat. This dog breed is also sometimes effective, affectionately known as E.T.'s or Charles. The best advice for these dogs is so that they should always be kept on lead or in a fenced-in yard because they typically do not need a lot of exercise, but they may wander off if given the opportunity. And the Havanese is also known as the Havana Silt Dog, and this breed sheds very little, but they need frequent grooming to keep their coat from matting. This dog breed comes in three coat types, the smooth, the curly, and the wavy. And the most, uh, and the type that most people choose is is that that wavy. Now these dogs are affectionate, happy little dogs. They have a, a lively, springy gait, and they don't know strangers. They are very fun-loving and warm and friendly dogs. They're also very healthy and long-lived. Now these dogs are natural companion dogs, and they can come in a wide variety of diverse colors. And they're not uh, tripped or clipped or tripped or cli clipped. Sorry, it's been a long day, you guys. They're not tripped or clipped like many breeds can be, but these dogs are very good with children and other pets to socialize in an early age. Now the Italian Greyhound is a very ancient and hardy breed even though it looks like it would be extremely fragile. The best home for this dog breed would be in a quiet household where there are no loud children. They also like to be up on high spots in your house, like on the backs of chairs or your sofa, so be careful because they can be quite the daredevil. These dogs are cold sensitive, so a sweater is a must in colder climates, and they do well in apartments as long as they get sufficient exercise. They are also the smallest members of the family of sight hounds, and this is dogs that hunt primarily by sight. Uh, the Italian Greyhound are very cat-like dogs in many ways, one being that they like to sunbathe. Be careful that you don't get these dogs sunburned or overheated. These dogs will follow you everywhere you go, and they want to be your constant companion. Now the Japanese Chin is a very playful little dog, and they like to make up their own tricks to show off to you know his audience or his friends. This this is a breed of dog that's always been first and foremost a companion dog. These dogs can be extremely mischievous and clown-like, and they're also called the Japanese Spaniel. Generally speaking, the Chin dog breed is divided into two weight groups: above seven pounds and below seven pounds. Like many other short-faced dog breeds, the Japanese Chin. Uh, tends to wheeze and snore. Additionally, they are prone to eye and respiratory problems. These dogs are good with mature children and with other pets, but should be protected around large dogs. Exercise requirements are quite low, making them perfect apartment dogs and perfect for a single family or, or an elderly person. Now the Maltese is a little toy dog that's covered from head to foot with uh, that beautiful white, silky, uh, beautiful hair. They can get along well with other cats or even with other pets as long as they're socialized to them early on. Now the coat requires daily brushing to keep its elegant appearance. A beautiful built Maltese seems to float above the ground on a cloud of beautiful flowing white hair when they move. Despite its size, usually around 46 pounds. These dogs are without fear and are a good choice for people who live in small apartments because of their size, but for the same reason it's not a good candidate for those with small children unless the owner can provide constant supervision between the two. 
Now the Toy Manchester Terrier is a small black short coated dog and they have distinctive rich mahogany markings and a tapered style tail. Now the Toy Manchester variety must weigh less than 12 pounds. These are a devoted and affectionate dog and they make a good house pet and a great watchdog. Manchester Terriers should not be trusted with other small non-canine animals or pets and there are two varieties of the Manchester Terrier, the toy and the standard and here we're talking about the toy. There are no differences between the standard and the toy varieties uh, except for the ear and uh, the size. The toy is a diminutive version of the standard variety. Now the miniature pincher is an ideal dog uh, for the house and they can be very possessive of their loved ones. They're fearless when they're on guard and they can make an excellent watchdog. Now these guys are feisty as a terrier and every bit as alert as a doberman and the men pin is a proud, vigorous, and playful dog even into their old age. Their know-it-all attitude can make them hard to train, however. Characteristic traits of this little dog are his hackney-like action when they're moving, their fearless animation, and their complete self-awareness of, of everything, and they have a very spirited presence. These dogs are great with adults, but are not known for being so, so good with small children. And the Papillon uh, is a, a small little dog, and the name means butterfly in French. This elegant little dog is named, named because his wing-like ears resemble that of a beautiful butterfly. Um, now, Stanley Korn, the author of The Intelligence of Dogs, rates this little dog breed eighth among all dog breeds. There's also a drop-eared version of this breed called the Phelan, which means night moth. And both types of dog can still be born in the same litter. Perfect for city and country dwellers alike. These dogs uh, do like to play, both with toys inside as well as outside, and they're a hardy competitor in any kind of sports. They do benefit from regular exercise, and they are often seen in agility competitions. They prefer to cuddle with their owner, to whom he becomes affectionately attached for life. And the Pekingese is a very well-balanced, compact little dog with a heavier front and lighter hindquarters. This dog must suggest its Chinese ori origin in its directness, independence, individuality, and its expression. Now, the Pekingese breed was held sacred in China, its land of origin, in, back in ancient times. They are a very dignified little dog, and they can sometimes be very stubborn. It's a good idea, or a good dog, excuse me, for small apartment life, uh, and they can just be happy as can be in a rural setting as well. Typically, these dogs are 6 to 14 pounds in weight. Pekingese are good with other animals and with other children under adult supervision. Just make sure that the play doesn't get too rough for them. The best home for these little guys is inside with their family. And the Pomeranian is a magnificent small family pet. He is very alert in character and they typically weigh under 7 pounds. They are definitely a force to be aware of. These little dogs do need daily exercise, but they can get it indoors as long as they're given, you know, a, a nice game of fetch or, or whatever in their house or a nice stroll around the block. These dogs are not meant to live outdoors due to their need for human companionship as well as their inability to withstand hot or extremely cold uh, temperatures. Be aware that these dogs are prone to early tooth loss, so be careful to clean their teeth regularly. Um, these dogs are better with adults and older, more mature children, and they're also very devoted to their, hum their favorite human family or their favorite human member. Now, the pug is one of the oldest breeds known, and it can be traced back to at least 400 BC where Buddhist monks in Tibet kept them as pets. It is believed that these dogs got their name by being compared to the facial expressions of the marmoset monkeys, which are so popular during the 1700s. Now these dogs are an even-tempered breed, they're also very playful, outgoing, very loving, and they possess a lot of charm. The pug has often been referred to as being molto and parvo, which basically means a lot of dog in a small space. Now these dogs can come in colors of fawn, silver, or black, and they're usually around 14 to 18 pounds in weight. Pugs can get along well with children and other pets, but, but they also can become jealous if they feel they're not getting enough attention. Now the Toy Poodle is the national dog of France. These dogs are known for their retrieving capabilities in the water and they are a very active, intelligent, and elegant appearing little dog. They make great apartment dogs and they're very easy to train. The words standard, miniature, and toy are all used to denote size only. All of these dogs are still considered one breed. 
Concerning the toy poodle per the AKC, however, size must be 10 inches or under at the highest point of the shoulders to be classified as a toy, as a toy dog. Uh, these dogs do require extensive professional grooming every four to eight weeks, you know, to keep the coat under control. And they can be barkers, but generally they make a very good watchdog for their small size. And the Shih Tzu is a very good companion and they make an ideal family pet. Primarily these dogs are lap dog and they have a history of also being a watchdog. However, even though uh, this dog breed is typically associated with China, research shows that the origins really date back to 17th century Tibetan monks. And these are strictly house dogs who cannot deal with hot or humid weather. Because of its long, luxurious coat, grooming these dogs needs to be done on a daily basis. Now, they can make very lovable pets, and they enjoy playing with their owner. And these dogs also make wonderful house pets and are great with children. In fact, the Shih Tzu scores high on the friendliness scale even when it comes to other dogs, other pets, or even strangers. And the Silky Terrier, now these little dogs are a true toy terrier. The Silky's coat is his crowning glory. It is virtually odorless and non-shedding, and it needs to be brushed for about 10 minutes every day to keep it shining and free of mats. Now, Silkies are also good with children as long as the children treat them with kindness and respect, but they are generally trustworthy with other pets, or excuse me, they're generally not trustworthy with other pets and can get snappy and jealous around other dogs. The uh, coincident nature of the Silky Terrier and their joy of life make them an ideal companion and very adaptable to filling, you know, most, most lifestyles. However, this is not a mellow lap dog by any means. It is a spirited little dog with a good degree of physical strength and they, they do require uh, a lot of attention, so just keep this in mind. Now, the Toy Fox Terrier is still considered a working terrier and a true American breed developed by breeding various small fox, excuse me, various small smooth fox terriers and other toy breeds. Many of these dogs delight in hunting and going to ground and chasing squirrels or whatever all over the yard. These dogs are very easy to groom and they're also pretty easy to train, although it's considered a very light shedder. These dogs are good with other pets, but it's not a good dog uh, breed for toddlers or small children. However, they can do better, you know, do well with older children. The best home for this dog breed would be with an active stay-at-home retiree or with a family that has a fenced-in yard. And also, the last one we'll talk about today in the toy breeds is the Yorkie, or the Yorkshire Terrier. And despite their small size, these dogs are more than willing to act as a guardian for their master, and they make an excellent watchdog. The temperament of this little dog breed is that of a bold, confident, and very courageous little animal. They're always eager for fun and adventures of any kind, and they can be a bit aggressive toward uh, other small animals and, and other animals that they don't know about. And this definitely maintains that that old rough-edged terrier spirit, even though you know it's a small, small, small dog. The Yorkie needs plenty of exercise, but it can get all that it needs simply by running from room to room inside its own house or apartment. Of course, this does not mean that they shouldn't go outside. In fact, they like to go out for brisk walks with their owner. Just be sure to keep your dog on leash to avoid problems with other small animals. Grooming needs to be done on a regular basis, and this is not. Uh, a dog breed that's meant to live outdoors. They prefer the companionship of their family. Now if you'd like to learn about other AKC purebred dog breeds or if you would like to learn about some of the other AKC purebred dog breed groups please visit my website at www.pedigreedpups.com. Now I hope you've enjoyed the information I've shared with you today and I hope you've learned something and again if you have other information you would like to you know to learn about other dog breeds or whatever please visit my website again that's www.pedigreepups.com and thank you for your time